This programme is an Orange Bag Media production. Hello, Adeline. Hey, James. Hey, hey, Risa. Hope you are watching back home. and welcome to Italy. We're near its seventh largest city, Bologna, which has the classic dish tagliatelle al ragù named after it. Spaghetti bolognese, of course. That's not all this region is known for. A lot of history in the buildings, not just in the city itself, but in the surrounding villages. And they have the added bonus of an incredible view over a beautiful part of the world. And within this history-based landscape, is a motor racing circuit that also boasts a lot of history. The Autodromo Enzo e Dino Ferrari, which plays host to the Hankook 12 hours of Imola. The weather is beautiful, a lot of sunshine, and no clouds at the above. So yeah, it makes everybody happy when there is a sunshine. The cars arrived here in Imola on Wednesday. Thursday, they had a private test session with an official free practice session this Friday morning. Everyone have come through those sessions unscathed. There were a few cars that really had uh, had bad luck. To start with the car 155 of Bascuta Racing, they had an accident uh, during the free practice, so they couldn't do the qualifying. The same is also for the car 446 of Team Endurance Romania, that had a crash already during the optional private test. And the third car with uh, bad luck was uh, the 132 German wheels, uh, that also had uh, bad luck uh, during the free practice. The damage to those three cars too severe to have them able to start today's race. However, the Baz Cowden team that services the Kawasaki Racing 155 have a solution for their drivers. Yeah, we had a big, big crash at the end of the start-finish straight with the Kawasaki Racing car. Um, it was beyond repair, so we um, we deployed our, our spare car uh, for the race. We were lucky to have one with us uh, that we brought from the Netherlands all the way to Italy, uh, basically for parts, but now we had to change the entire car. We are very happy that the 145 car of Baskute could prepare and repair everything, and we are really looking forward to the race. But before that, we have to have the qualifying. A 45-minute session where the drivers try to get the best starting position for the grid later in the day. Throughout the session, in all classes, positions changed. The modern team have a secret weapon. The current reigning LMP2 champion in the European Le Mans series, Matthias Besch. And he qualified in both the 216 and 217 Moderna cars. Yeah, two cars was quite tough, uh, jumping from one car to another. We could have done a little bit better if I was focusing on one car, for sure, uh, but uh, we managed to get the pole, so I was really happy for the whole team. But, reigning LMP2 champion or not, in the TCE series, he had to battle for pole position with Rick Breukers, who grew up racing in these FIA-sanctioned 24-hour races. And there's less than a tenth of a second between the two drivers. Well, at the start of the qualifying, we were in a pole position uh, with, uh, with a good gap to P2. Uh, on the end, when everyone went for the second run on new tyres, everyone improved. But we had some, uh, some small balance issues and we couldn't improve the lap time, which, uh, which costed us our pole position. Three classes this weekend in the TCE series. They each have their own pole sitter. Third on the start grid, the 118 of JR Motorsport. They're also the quickest in the SP3 class. Yeah, first time for me, I had only the qualification to do. And uh, yes, for me, it was a new experience, new track. And uh, I think it was good. Pole position. Doors closed and the warm-up laps are underway. So what can we expect? Uh, well, we're, we're hoping to do well, but we know it's a long race. You know, eight, uh, four hours today, eight hours tomorrow. Anything can happen, but uh, I think we've got a really, really good car. The team did a brilliant job and we've got our secret weapon in Matthias Besch. And uh, he's always very, very quick. So we're just trying to uh, not be too slow and, uh, and do well for him. 
I don't know. I hope uh, we can finish the race, the first four hours, and uh, let's see uh, tomorrow. Wow, well, we're aiming for the podium. Um, actually, the speed in our car is not as high expected. Um, but yeah, we have to try to do our best and have a good strategy. The, 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 the track is very tough for the car. So we hope uh, that he stays in one piece and uh, let's see it in the end. The 216 of Modena Motorsport is heading the field. You might expect their tactics will be to defend that position at all cost. However, this team has a lot of experience racing in the endurance series. Well, I mean, on a 12-hour race, pole isn't really everything. Uh, I think the key is to stay out of trouble and not to lose too much time to anyone who is in front. And that's uh, certainly our strategy uh, in the beginning. Of course, if we're still in the game uh, in the closing hours, then we're, uh, we're going to step on it. 3.30, Friday afternoon. And after two warm-up laps, the Hankook 12 hours of Imola is about to get underway. Autodromo Enzo e Dino Ferrari. The lights are out, but because of the curve in the middle of the main straight, it's only now that we see the touring cars emerge. At the front of the field, the Modena Motorsport number 216 holds on to its pole position and keeps the lead, but the 303 of Red Camel has to make sure not to be overtaken by the JR Motorsport car, who started in third. But straight after that corner, Rick Breukers in the orange Seat manages to push ahead and overtake not only the 118 of GR Motorsports, but also the leading Modena car. I wanted to defend from a car that was right behind me, and then um, uh, Rick Breukers uh, passed me on the outside. So that was kind of a uh, turn number one, and uh, we were uh, in second. This race is on the same track at the same time as the 24-hour GT series. So a spin on their first lap meant a code 60 which also is in effect for the TCE races. Yeah, we got a code 60, I think, in lap one, uh, because one of the GT3 Audis uh, spun in, uh, in turn six. Uh, but after that, we went racing again, and we built up a good gap to, uh, to our P2 in class. The restart was disastrous for the former race leader. I didn't realize it had gone back to green, because when I passed the incident, uh, the car was still in the gravel, and I think it was only half a lap, and it went green. So I was unprepared, and boom, boom, boom. It's not a nice feeling. You feel like a complete idiot, unfortunately. Um, in the end, yeah, you lose a few track positions, but you know, if it's in the first hour, you just live with it and you try to do your best from there on. As the race leader from the GT series overtakes the TCE series leader, the replacement car 155 needs a quick pit stop. Yeah, we had a little problem after a couple of laps. Uh, we didn't have the full power, which was a, a small problem with the, the throttle. Uh, but we solved this in 10-15 in seconds and now the pace is, uh, is good. It's comparable to the, to the top five in TCR class, so we're happy. It's not an easy drive. Not for the drivers and not for the cars. The track is very uh, slippery. It's very hot also too. So uh, it's hard to, uh, to, to find grip. And also uh, it's a hard turf because it's very, very hot in the car. And uh, it's physically uh, difficult to do it. Uh, also, we use uh, yellow brakes and uh, we have no attack at the brakes, so you lose every time in each turn the front of the car. So the temperatures of the tires get higher and higher, so it's more and more difficult. So it was hard to uh, stay on the track. Uh, it was quite hot. I didn't have anything to drink because we, have, we don't have any drinking system. And uh, I just pushed as, as much as I could and saved the tires at the same time. So it was interesting to see how that went. And uh, I think we did a good job. Harry Hildish takes a short excursion off the track, but it hasn't ruined his good run up to now, as his teammate explains. We qualified at 10th in the uh, TCR class, and after one lap, the guy was, was driving around on uh, the third, uh, uh, third place. Turned out it was a bit of a jump start, but it cost us a penalty of 10 seconds, but that was okay. Triple five goes off track and nearly gets collected by the modern Seat that was trying to get into the pit lane with the front of their car damaged. The Seats and the newer brand Cupra are well represented, with half of the TCR cars being one or the other. Yeah, but every uh, Cupra, is, Cupra is doing well. Every Seat this is one of the best prepared cars. It's uh, they've got so much, uh, uh, they've done so much at Seat to to make this a real good endurance car. Uh, they've been uh, uh, been in this competition for what seven years, and before there was a Super Copa, and uh, it's a real race car, which is uh, specially made for endurance, for the endurance setup and. Uh, now you see uh, the TCR class in uh, Imola is the biggest class there is. Uh, the Volkswagens are doing uh, quite well as, 
uh, also, and uh, a lot of Seat. So it's very nice competition, and it's uh, a lot of cars in our class, which makes it uh, a huge fun. The Seat number 217 of Modern and Motorsport is still being worked on in the garage. After the incident, the car it nearly collided with, the triple five of TFT Top Lock Racing, is driving slowly on the track. We try to to take with the to take the, the, the different gearbox. We, we play with the gearbox and nothing happened. No, no, no transmission. Nothing at all. And we were at P5 when we uh, broke the transmission. The mechanics, as well as having to collect the car from the pit lane entrance, then need to locate the issue. We tried to fix the gearbox to find the piece who is broken the gearbox to change it. After, I suppose we're going to try to, to restart and uh, to push on the track. Here's how it looks after just two hours of racing. LMS Racing have set a cracking pace at the start of the race, running first overall. The 303 of Red Camel Jordan just seven seconds behind. No time to relax there then. Third overall, the JR Motorsport number 118, and that's the highest place SP3 car. With the 118 leading the SP3 class, two laps down in second position, the 258 BMW of Munchkoff Racing. Danish team Scangrip Racing a further three laps down in third with their number 786 car. More BMWs in the Cup 1 class, the 151 of Zorg Rensport leads. Offer racing by Bonk of second and third with their 131 and 127 cars respectively. This is Endurance. Uh, endurance racing for me is the most enjoyable form of racing uh, because for, for me it means getting together two days in a row, full competition, hanging out with your friends and family and brothers. Um, that is endurance racing. Hard racing on the track and off the, out of the car uh, enjoying the, the company that you have. Creventing has done a, a brilliant job. This is the Hankook 12 hours of Imola. A 24-hour race straight through from start to finish is not possible as the track is in the middle of the town. But the circuit is trying to rectify that situation. We're working about, we are, we are um, trying to set up new kind of uh, uh, wall to just avoid the, the, this problem. And probably the, the investments in the next year will be in, in, that, in that direction. This is a legendary venue that has its origins back in 1953. Yes, I think uh, the Imola circuit is another legendary circuit in our series. Um, it hosted the Formula One races till 2006. And of course, the circuit is also very famous uh, because of the tragical uh, accidents of Arta Senna in uh, 1994. But uh, yeah, it's a really challenging circuit. I think the, the drivers love the circuit. It's, it's pretty difficult. Uh, you would think that it's not a momentum track because there's a lot of slow corners, but there are, it, it is. It's important how you get through the, the middle of the corner is more important, and then the exit. Uh, so it's there's you're always feels like you're always working the balance, and then you throw the, the elevation. You know, I've driven Spa and uh, Road Atlanta, Watkins Glen back in the U.S. And this track, some of the turns are very difficult because of some of the elevation changes that you have and the, the flow that it has into it. But I'm enjoying it. I love it. You know, anytime you can come to Europe and, and run a race like this at a historic track like Imola, it's, it's fantastic. It's a fast circuit, but also a very tight high-speed corners. Um, especially here to the straight, it's a real, real uh, speed straight. Um, a very challenging, yes. The track is smaller than most modern-day circuits. It's so narrow, and 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 then the and the corners and the, and the corners and so on. If you are dri if you are driving on Kota or in Dubai, uh, the, the, the this one is a, an, an old-fashioned uh, race track. It's a fast track, but it's not so wide. So when we go in the, uh, uh, through the uh, curves, there's only uh, there's only space for one car. So. Um, you have to make some decisions sometimes because when, when there comes a Porsche or a Mercedes, they are pretty fast and break very late. So you have to take decision, should I go or should they go? Always look in the mirrors and more or less the same on, on, on every track, but here there's no space. 
The race, pure joy for those who are new to this circuit. Well, it's a, it's a nice circuit. Uh, we have never uh, driven here in, uh, in Italy, in uh, Imola. So it's, it's a nice circuit, but it's very busy. 50 cars and uh, yeah, well, first we had to, to learn the, the circuit, of course. And, uh, but after an hour, you know uh, how it works here. On board the 303, Ivo Broik is chasing the lead spot in his class, but he has to do so while letting the cars from the GT Series go past him. Courtesy is a big thing in endurance racing. It also keeps you and the car from unnecessary damage. As they say, if you want to finish first, first you have to finish. Frank Badoff in the BMW M4 of Munchkopf Racing is a bit puzzled about some debris on the track. Well, there were all uh, kinds of stuff on the, on the track and... Uh and I heard it was uh, for my car, but I didn't know that. And uh, we don't know how it, uh, how it's possible that we all lost, uh, that we had so that we have so much damage. And uh, I went to the race director and I asked him if he had seen on the screens uh, if there was any accident, but uh, he had he hadn't seen it on the on the screen. But there were others who did see what happened. Oh well, that was real fun. Uh, Ivo and I were battling together in our stint, uh, bumper to bumper, and uh, Munkhoff is in front of us. In, I think, turn nine, he misses the apex, goes out, and uh, his plastic rear bumper goes over the bump and it breaks in two. So this, he comes on track again and uh, is, is floating behind him. Uh, so here on the straight, it breaks loose, and I go left or right, and Ivo goes left, and it's in the middle. And this was a code 60 afterwards so to, to pick up the piece. Uh, we saw it happening. We were live sitting front row, saw it happen. It was big fun. That's racing. Team Hyundai Denmark left their Copenhagen base for the Imola track and took their whole crew with them. We, we are around uh, 20 people here. Uh, we are part of the uh, Jan Engelbrecht and me. We are the owner of the, of, of the car. And we are supported by uh, Hyundai Denmark, and we are, have the, the direct contact to uh, Hyundai Motorsport in Germany. So they are online all the time to support us. And the car is the first uh, endurance Hyundai car that has been ever built. This makes the 24-hour series the first endurance championship that this Hyundai has ever raced in. This isn't just called endurance racing. Cars have enough to endure, as do the drivers. Very tired, very tired. It was very tough. Uh, not only for the for the heat, uh, I can drink water, but the, the handling of the car was not which I wanted to be. And I tried to, to, to make better lap times. I uh, started to make small mistakes at the end. And uh, yeah, that's, um, I wanted to be faster, I couldn't. So that, that basically, that's it. In the number 216 modern Cupra is a driver new to the series but he has endurance pedigree, it's Matthias Besch. Yeah, it's really cool, you know, uh, it's really a, a new challenge for me coming from LMP1. So it's kind of uh, kind of uh, funny and uh, yeah, there is a good re level also, so I try to give my best and uh, it's, it's a good fun. Atmosphere is cool, you know, barbecue on the night, relax. Uh, Matthias is doing a fantastic job. I think he's the fastest out there in our class. Uh, John will go in a car next. Tomorrow, you know, eight, eight hours. Um, we we want to stay in the fight throughout the whole race and at, at the end um, see how much we need to push to, um, to, I don't know, get the podium or go for the win. For the time being, the 216 is in the lead of the race. If they want to keep it that way, they need to stay out of the gravel. The first part of the race is nearly complete and the finish flag will be out soon. The Munchkov team know that they need to get their BMW in for some overnight repairs as a result of the earlier damage. We have troubles now. Uh, it's not a good car at the moment. So uh, the damage uh, is, is not good. We have to fix it. And maybe tonight or maybe tomorrow uh, we have to fix it because uh, we can't drive like, uh, like this. In the final moments of the first part, Rob Cohen in the 151 loses the lead in the Cup 1 class when he puts the BMW into the gravel. As the flag came out and the other cars were in Park Fermi, he still needed to be recovered. Here's how they stand after the first day of racing. Top four all on the same lap and will start tomorrow without any time difference. Modern Motorsport number 216 finishes the first four hours ahead of the field. GR Motorsport in their number 118 is second, but as an SP3 car, will start tomorrow behind all the TCR cars as the start is in class order. 
third, the 303 of Red Camel Jordans, but a second car in class will be on the outside of the first row. Further down in the TCR class, the NKPP 175, LMS Racing 129 in fourth, and the Lestrup Racing Team with Volkswagen number 110 in fifth. In SP3, JR Motorsport with their number 118 leads. Munchkoff 259 is second, but 786 of Scangrip Racing finished today in third. The cars were untouched in Park Fermi overnight, but there were teams decided they needed to work on their machines, and so they take a penalty of 10 laps as prescribed by the series rules and regulations. No, we are damaged uh, after four hours, and uh, the car was in Park Fermi, but we couldn't drive like that. We had too much damage. The rear was gone. We had uh, the diffuser, and uh, the back was, uh, was laying on the track and not on the car. So. <laughs> So we had to fix it. We couldn't drive uh, the, the, like that. The night has passed and we've completed the second race of seven race series this morning who are supporting the 12 hours of Imola this weekend. It's 11 o'clock and the grid has filled up again with endurance cars. We are ready for the second part of the 12 hours of Imola powered by Hankook. And behind me you see the start grid of the cars in the TCE series. Uh, on place number one we have the 216 of Modena Motorsports. On place number two the 118 from JR Motorsports. And on place number three we have the 303 from Red Camel Jordans. And it's very nice to see that on the first place it's a TCR car. On the second place an SP3 car. And on the third place also a TCR class. So that they are very, um, very close to each other. This race is combined with the 24-hour GT series. In that event, the Slide Sport Palex number 83 Porsche retired yesterday after less than an hour of racing. All of their drivers could, of course, go home, but one of them decided not to. So we had a big problem yesterday with the, with the Porsche. I didn't get a stint in. Uh, only one driver do one stint, which was Adam Freeman, and the, uh, he had a problem with uh, two tyres. And the second tyre, he loses at uh, 165 miles an hour at the end of the straight, so it's a huge moment. Adam did a fantastic job, but unfortunately, coming back into the pits, uh, the tyre is rubbing on the cam cover, and then the engine is finished, so the car is finished. So we asked the organisers if it's possible. Uh, one team had was one driver short, a BMW. It's eight hours. It's a long time for two drivers, four hours each. So uh, uh, the organisers gave, uh, gave uh, an allowance for me to change teams. So now I change car completely. I jump in an unfamiliar car, so it will be exciting. Changing drivers mid-race is not a common thing to be able to achieve, but the 24-hour touring car series powered by Hankook is all about maximising driving time. So race control allowed Stephen to change to the JR Motorsport 118 in the TCE event. He has done his training sessions here that everything uh, he knows the car so for us it was the same as if you uh, trained also in two cars so for us there was no problem so we, we checked everything if he did the training if he did, knows the car if he knows the track and then there is no issue anymore to, to stop him he'll be racing the car that at this restart is the class leader yesterday we are in third uh, behind the two tcr cars and now uh, we are leading uh, the tce uh, uh, class and yeah, and we are first now, so yeah, I, I hope uh, that we can uh, win our class. In the 24-hour series with split races, the rule is that only the lap difference at the end of the first part are taken into account. Effectively, an immediate gain of 53 seconds for Red Camel Jordan NL from where they finished yesterday. They'll start from third today, second in the TCR class. We are starting on P2. We have around half of the fuel tank still uh, still in the car, so we have to see. It's it's different. Everyone is on different strategies, and four cars are still in the lead lap, so it will be really interesting. High hopes for the two thirds of the race that are yet to come. The expectations for today, it will be a, a long and hot day for all the drivers, and um, so there will be battles in every classes. The, the numbers one, two, three are already very close to each other, although that are through different classes. So it will be very exciting. The, the whole eight hours till the end. Expectations, stay on track. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a very difficult track for me because uh, I've been to Dubai and Kota, but this, this, is a, this is a real man track. This is from second to none. So in one minute you can stay on track and then next, next time you can stay in the gravel. So up to this race, I've never been so afraid before.
but now it's okay. Uh, the first stint uh, today is uh, two hours, and I hope we can we come into the, to the uh, starting line after eight hours. The warm-up laps have commenced and the next eight hours are about to get underway. Looking back on the first four hours of the race yesterday, what does race director Martin van der Paffert expect of this second part of the race? I think it's going to be an exciting start. Everybody knows how it works now. Uh, I hope there is not a code 60 direct after the start, but the, the races are very fine and uh, the, the leaders in the last lap uh, uh, were, were the same, so I think it's going to be a thrilling race. The 216 Modena and the 118 from GR Motorsport head the field towards the start. The real question is, where will they be eight hours from now? The race has recommenced. And the clock will count down until 7.30 this evening. The field appears to fall into two parts, with the TCR cars creating a gap to the rest of the field. First few corners of the race not showing a lot of changes in the order. Nobody wanting to jeopardise their position by being overzealous. All the drivers following Matthias Besch in the Modena 216 Cupra. I did the start where we were leading the race, so it was pretty cool. Uh, we had a, a, a really good rhythm and a good pace, so um, obviously it was great. It's Marco Poland who is the first to overstress the car and he spins off track. This causes a short code 60, a situation used by some of the teams to do their fuel stop, as they might have ended with a near empty tank yesterday. The 216 is still in the lead, enabling him to go in for that trip down pit lane. Yeah, we had a few penalties, but you know, every team had, uh, had some penalties here. It's part of the game. It was not too bad. So, uh, yeah, we just, uh, I think we have the good rhythm to uh, get rid of that and come back in the race. As well as serving the penalties, a brake change too. It's very demanding for the brakes here. Um, so uh, we had to come and change the, 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 the brake pads. But I think all the teams are going to have to change it. Uh, or we'll have to see some big problems, but uh, yeah, let's see how the race develop. The race continues at pace with 21 cars battling it out for points in the championship or maybe just trying to win. Of course, to get a good result, you need to keep your car on track. Well, not all of our drivers manage to do that. This brings excitement for the spectators who love seeing the spins, but you see it differently if this happens shortly after you've started your driving stint. It was a little crazy. To begin with, there was one of the TCR cars lost his brakes going into turn one. And he went flying through the gravel trap, flying through the chicane, onto the other side, and it happens right in front of your first bit. And you're like, whoa, I don't know, this is this is hairy. Harry Hilders was racing the NKKP car and got out unscathed. We asked the team manager what happened. On the right front at the car of Harry, uh, the brake disc exploded. And for the moment, it's uh, a little bit uh, un, uh, unclear what causes this problem. Uh, we are investigating this. We did a bedding in of the brakes uh, exactly as the supplier uh, asked us to do. We have used the correct material. We have mounted the material in the correct way. So it's a little unclear what happened there. So we're investigating. We have the people from Salesport, from the supplier and also Paget. We have contact with them to find the, uh, the cause of the problem and of course to find a solution. And Seth Thomas regained his composure and got back into his rhythm too. But, you know, you just, I settled into my stint and then, um, you know, it's just clicking off laps and staying, staying, staying away from traffic. Two hours of racing are completed today. Four hours yesterday, we're at the halfway mark. Red Camel Jordans.nl started today from third and they now lead by a lap. Fourth yesterday, the 129 of LMS Racing, they've moved up to second. GR Motorsports number 118, two hours ago in second position, is down to third, 22 seconds away from second place. The GR Motorsport entry is also the leader in the SP3 class. The Dutch team have a handy 17 lap lead over the Danish entry of Scan Grip Racing, whose number 786 BMW is second. Another Dutch entry, the Munchkoff Racing 259, is third. And in the Cup 1 class, Hoffer 131 has a four lap lead over the 151 of Saw Grensport. Two laps further back in third, the 127 from Hoffer. This is endurance. Oh, this is endurance. Uh, you share everything together. And uh, the good things and the bad things, um, uh, we, yes. Uh, and our thoughts are with one of our mechanics who has a very difficult situation at home. He lost his wife. And uh, this whole weekend, uh, our thoughts are with, uh, with John.
24-hour touring car endurance series powered by Hankook attracts teams and drivers from all over the world. Spectators come from far and wide to watch. Next to that, paddock stands that come from the other side of the world. An orange juice vendor from Australia. Uh, obviously, it's successful. We sell a lot of orange juice. And, uh, and once again, the team atmosphere of the group here at Creventic and the team atmosphere with the people in the teams themselves. Uh, uh, it just seems to be like one big family and everyone's enjoying themselves. It's, it's a lot of fun to be a part of. And from the other side of the Atlantic, Rue Helmets from America, here in collaboration with their British partners. I'm the head of Europe for Rook's Helmets, um, but we also work for Speedcom, which is the partners of Creventec, who are providing all the um, technical communications, radio, team, track sort of stuff, as you can see here. So we've got a dual function. This series is a great place to promote their new cooled helmets to teams, drivers and motorsport enthusiasts. We launched in October last year in Europe. It's already been going three years in America successfully. Um, so yeah, it's a lot of promotion, a lot of, a lot of PR. We've got a few good drivers in Europe now as my ambassadors, Matt Neal in the UK, uh, a few guys in Scandinavia. We've got a few drivers in the teams here that have bought helmets and each time we have a Creventec race, uh, we get a few more guys buying helmets. So fingers crossed in, I don't know, maybe two or three years, the whole grid will be in Rooks's. That's my dream. To be successful in the 24-hour series powered by Hankook, a car needs a good engine, bodywork, engine fluid, and, of course, good tyres. But most teams would be lost without racing tape that can hold the car together after incidents, like here on the number 136. Running repairs is part of the ingenuity that teams must have to continue racing when it seems the odds are against you. It doesn't matter how you reach the finish line, but that you reach the finish line. Bodywork issues aren't the only problems teams have to solve. Simple mistakes, like not putting enough fuel in the car, but also more bizarre issues. The pit stop of the former race leader goes haywire when, by accident, the fire extinguisher is set off and covers the whole of the inside of the car with fire retardant foam. I think just uh, someone just pressed it on the driver change. We have to investigate, but uh, obviously we need to make it different or make a cover on top of it by mistake it just press it and then yeah we could not run with extinguisher so we had the extinguisher incident we had to change it and then we had a penalty because we ran without extinguisher for a few laps so all in all it cost us quite a lot meanwhile in another pit the car that managed to take the lead before the six hour mark well, i think we were one of the only teams who, uh, who extended their stand to two hours with one driver and that's why we we gained some time uh, now we are back in P2 and uh, we just had a small problem on the brake, so we will have to see where we are right now. Looking after your tyres is key in an endurance race, as if you have to change them, you lose time in the pit lane. Up to the crew to keep that delay to a minimum, as a race can be won or lost here. No surprise then that each team are looking at their competitors to see if they are gaining or losing in the pit lane. Yeah, our competitors are changing the brakes. Uh, we will see, but obviously we lost now a lot of time with the with the extinguisher, so we'll see how the race developed. And uh, yeah, I hope our team was a little bit quicker than them. Maybe we can fight them on that. So uh, let's see how it goes when everybody finished to change the brakes and uh, serve the penalties and stuff. Thomas Fretan is doing a great job in the 335 Peugeot. Even when the car hits the gravel, he manages to keep his wheels turning and the car moving in the right direction. He clears the gravel under his own power without losing too much time and is still in the battle He's ninth in the TCR class, 12th overall. The LMS car leading the race is one of three cars run by Baz Coton Racing. With four hours to go, what are the chances for these three entries? Uh, one car is quite ahead, uh, two, uh, more than two laps ahead. And we have the good strategy, uh, good drivers on the car. Uh, the other car is on the fourth place, uh, two laps behind the number three. So we're not sure if we can gain there but also the other teams might have some problems as the race is the four hours to go. And the uh, third car has six, sixth, seventh place, so they lost already uh, due to a collision on the broken radiator. So there's not a real podium uh, inside for them. But the podium is still four hours away. Let's see where everyone is in the standings after eight hours.
As mentioned, a two-lap gap for the Finnish race leaders. JR Motorsport has manoeuvred its way in between the TCR cars. The number 118 BMW E46 Coupe is a lap ahead of the 303 of Red Camel Jordans.nl. TCR is one of the hardest fought classes over the weekend. LMS obviously leading that class as well with the 303 Red Camel car second in class. Third, the Swedish team, Lestrup Racing in the Volkswagen Golf, number 110. The Cup 1 class sees the two Hoffer entries in the lead. The 131 has an eight lap advantage over the 127. Zorg Rensport in third, an additional six laps down with their 151 car. Racing in any of the Kreventnik organised endurance series is bound to be memorable. But if you can do so with your brothers, it's an even more special occasion. Yes, I'm here uh, with uh, two of my brothers. Uh, my older brother Marcel, who lives in Singapore. I live in Hong Kong. And then my younger brother Christian lives in uh, Canada, in Vancouver. Uh, so that's the three of us. And that's not the only brother team. Uh, I've got uh, teammates, uh, John and Wayne Shen as well. Uh, so actually, we're a team of brothers, you can say. Uh, two, uh, two brothers together can enjoy racing together, travel in Europe uh, or Asia. Well, this is the best thing. Uh, I, I really enjoyed it, that the opportunity that my brother and I, John Wayne, that can be together and racing and different places enjoy the uh, racing and food and meeting all the peoples. And not just drivers who are brothers, team managers too. We started our team uh, 18 years ago with my brother Buzz being a driver himself. And two years later, uh, we started our own team with, uh, with our own car and mechanics. And um, by then, we didn't have the uh, idea to grow this big. But now we have a fleet of 30 cars. And because we are uh, running it with the family, the entire team, it feels like a family. We are here with uh, 17 crew, and we are all, all one family. All very enjoyable. Oh, it's fantastic. Uh, we know each other so well. Um, you're right, we have uh, three brothers here and our father, he's actually our truck driver and he's also doing refueling, so it's one big family. And that's not the only dad joining a team. Up and down the pit lane, there are other fathers racing with their offspring. It's a family team, yes. Um, racing with Rick is uh, it's fun, he's very fast. And actually, at the end of uh, next week, uh, my other son, Luke, will, uh, will also go up for his uh, racing uh, license. So what makes it the perfect weekend? Racing together with the family, or is it all about the result? Well, I think both are important. I mean, uh, we, we love the racing, we're all competitive, and we always want to do well. Uh, Modena does a very, very good team, uh, you know, teamwork. They give us a good car. But yeah, I mean, uh, the whole objective is that we have a nice weekend together. We always make sure we have good meals, uh, like I said, some good wine, uh, and then a great car. And of course, we want to get the result as well. So the racing is also important. When you're racing with family members, the competition doesn't have to stop when you leave the track. In the end, it's all about strategy and lap times. And uh, it's nice to, to celebrate uh, the success. It's nice to share the, the things go wrong. Uh, the soldiers at the, at, the, at the table at home, we talk about a lot about racing. It's a disastrous start to the ninth hour of the race for Emil Salberg. He brings the Volkswagen into the garage. Serious issues with the gearbox. It's leaking and it's not shifting anymore. The car was third in class and fourth overall, but those positions will disappear quickly while the team are looking at the issue. Stephen Lickerish swapped to GR Motorsports this morning, but the 118 BMW has had its problems too. Just getting used to driving the BMW again, uh, going from the Porsche and the Lamborghini, so very different car to drive, and it took me a while to recalibrate, but yeah, no, it's good. We've had a few problems, so I've passed on my luck to this team as well, so they're ready to kill me. Driver before me reported problems shifting from fifth to sixth and fourth to fifth, um, and the, uh, the gear shift pump, was struggling, it had some air in the, uh, dropped a little bit of oil out the system, so the pump wasn't, uh, wasn't changing gear properly. So it meant uh, you had to basically come out of the gas and then use the, uh, use the manual crank to pull the, uh, pull the stick back and, and pull another gear. But it obviously in and out of the throttle down the straight is costing a lot of time, so a little bit frustrating. Guys did an amazing job. Um, new gearbox, new prop shaft, uh, really fantastic. So yeah, all credit to JR Motorsport for getting the car back out and keeping it running. One of the other Dutch teams, Munchkoff Racing, has also been battling to keep their car running after problems earlier in the weekend. In the first training, we had, we had uh, Eric uh, had a uh, 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 damage and the left uh, rear of the car. And uh, after that, 
more pro more problems than we uh, had hoped. But the car did start yesterday and today. After four hours, I said we were only four left behind. But then we had an engine failure. So, yeah, we couldn't. It's gone now. We're ready. We, 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 we can't uh, drive anymore. The 259 BMW is retired. Their engineers simply can't guarantee the engine problem won't get worse than it already is. Yeah, when the, mo uh, the motor is uh, broken, uh, that's, yeah. Uh, we cannot uh, win and there is a uh, risk uh, is too big. Uh, I think there's a problem uh, with, uh, with the engine. Exactly, we don't know, but it's too risky. Um, uh, we drive uh, more laps with this car. A driver who is more than happy with the state of their race, though, is Soren Jonsson. He's really enjoyed his stint. Uh, fantastic. I was driving nearly uh, two hours, and it had been fantastic. I was getting a very good time on the car, so it was, and it is an amazing uh, place to drive. Absolutely. The warm weather have meant breaking issues for some of the teams. TFT Top Lock Racing is one of them. They've been off the track. Yes, because uh, we have a problem with uh, the brake. A little problem with brake, the, and uh, it was uh, difficult also for, for this race. I think for the next race, I think uh, I, we will be uh, have a job uh, with brake. The resulting Code 60 has brought an end to the race of the Volkswagen 136 of motorsport development. Uh, at the start of the Code 60, uh, we have uh, the driver didn't see the, the flag, and uh, we have two car, uh, two car more more slowly on the front, uh, and they he don't brake and he push the, the car and he, it's too big crash, very big crash. It's, uh, it's okay. The driver is okay. The driver is okay. It's, Perfect. But the car has a big damage on the front because we have the front bumper out, uh, the wheel, uh, the front wheel and the rear wheel is uh, out uh, and uh, the big damage on the car. We need to repair for the, this, uh, this next race. The Italian heat is having a big effect on the drivers at the Hankook 12 hours of Imola. Yeah, it, it's, it's uh, very difficult because uh, it's very hot in the car and uh, it's difficult for all uh, the, the drivers in our team and it's difficult to, to drive uh, one hour, one hour uh, 50. Yeah, it's, it's fun, yeah, it's very, very good. Uh, it's uh, the, the first time for us with this type of car. It's not the first time uh, for competition because uh, it's since uh, for 30, 30 years. But with this car, it's very, very, very fun. Sample. Two hours to go, and here are the standings. The 129 of LMS Racing by Bas Houghton Racing have now extended their lead. It's three laps back to Red Camel Jordans.nl, the 303. Two more laps down for Modern and Motorsports, number 216 in third. The top six, all TCR cars. The Cup 1 leader is seventh overall. It's the Hoffa Racing powered by Bonk Motorsport, number 131. Their sister car is second. They are two laps ahead of the third place car in Cup 1. That's the 151 of Sork Ren Sport. In SP3, Scan Grip Racing leads by two laps over JR Motorsport. Munchkoff Racing now out of the race, but they've completed enough laps to gain some championship points. This is endurance. It's very good. It's terrific to have them back. Hankook here is uh, an honor for us in uh, this amazing circuit. We are always happy about it. Uh, I think that all the people that uh, uh, came to Imola expect a great race result like, like that. The FIA-sanctioned 24-hour touring car endurance series, along with the GT Endurance Series and Prototype Endurance Series, were created and continue to be run by Dutch organiser Creventic. In the last 14 years, Creventic have earned a reputation for putting on good events, having fun in the paddock, and that's a formula that keeps drawing new drivers to the series. First race in uh, Creventic's 24 hours. It's perfect, very professional, and... Uh uh, the, the people are very uh, kindly and it's a very nice meeting to do it. Yeah, we, appre we appreciate to be here. 
the teams and drivers are at the very centre of everything that Creventic do. When you drive in one of their events, it's enjoyable for everybody. And teams and drivers do notice this. We are absolutely fantastic, happy to be here. Not only here, but also when we are driving in Dubai and so on. And we can see it's growing. Uh, we can see that the, 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 when we are seeing all the people from the Creventic, and we, uh, they always uh, like to help us. If we have some questions, they are coming very quickly to, uh, back to us. So it is uh, fantastic to be a part of it. To make sure that everything runs smoothly, and to make sure there's fun too, the paddock is filled with orange shirts. Those are the employees and volunteers from Creventic. Uh, utile dulci, as the old Romans used to say whilst we're here in, uh, in Imola, in Italy. Utile dulci means uh, combine the fun with the necessary things, and that's what we do during racing. And uh, we have lots of fun, and uh, thanks to Creventic we can do it uh, quite often, and we're getting better and better in it. We're getting older, but we're getting more mature in the endurance racing, endurance racing. So we have, uh, we're having big fun, yeah. There are plenty of races left this year for teams and drivers to join in all of this fun. Races in Portimao, Barcelona, Spa, and in the USA at the Circuit of the Americas all coming up. And then, of course, the 2019 season will kick off with the famous 24 Hours of Dubai. Into the last two hours of the Imola race of the 24-hour Touring Car Endurance Series powered by Hankook, with the finish flag not too far away, team tactics might just change now. Those trailing, trying to push a little bit harder. Those in the lead, making sure that they don't overstress the car or make any mistakes. You are allowed up to a maximum of five drivers in this series, but if there's only two of you, how do you handle that over the weekend? You get into a flow. Uh, you need a certain uh, kind of uh, condition, uh, sort of endurance condition, but if you do it quite often, there's not that a big, it's not that a big tr uh, problem. You just have to do it. It's a mental thing. Uh, endurance racing is a mental thing. It's uh, staying out as long as possible. To, and the one who does the most laps at the end wins. Not who does the fastest lap. It's the guy who does the most laps, he wins. He gets a very cheap, uh, <laughs> shiny thing, which costs probably 20 euros. But that's what it's all about. Preferably with a one on it, but a two or a, or a three on it is fine by us. As long as we're on the podium. No shiny things this year as trophies. Each event this year has a specially made commemorative circuit map of wood with first, second or third on it, sponsored by Circuit von Hout. A very clear aim for the final result. Well, I mean, uh, we want to stay in the hunt for the podium at the very minimum. I think we have a chance to do that. Uh, I think my stint in the end went OK. Uh, but yes, a good result is definitely what we're looking for. The fact that so many teams and drivers return to the series is testament to the great racing and the atmosphere in the paddock. We enjoyed it very much. The, uh, the level is very, very, very high, uh, like, like him, the case. He's a fast guy. <laughs> we, always have fun on the, we always have fun on the track. <laughs> it's a, we're done. It's a battle to the end. And, uh, we're always battling together. This, this is endurance. This is endurance. <laughs> this is endurance. Yeah, yeah, this. Sometimes rivalry on the track can spill into the paddock. But that doesn't happen in these Creventic organised events. Not at all. No, no. Why? No, the best one. It's a sport, and, huh? Yeah, and at higher, I, I, I wish he can win as much as we do, and ah. and it's the only way around the thing. It is, it is. I mean, I always like it when I see the orange car in front of me, <laughs> and he likes it when he sees yeah, the green yeah, yeah, yeah. car in front when of me. When I see the, 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 the greenish it. car, <laughs> I, I go. I think I go four times quicker. <laughs> <laughs> me too. That's the way it works. <laughs> And like we, we try to learn from each other as well. And yeah. uh, I always ask, who's, who's in the car? How are your guys? And uh, he's doing the same. <laughs> I'm sure. <Good> luck. <laughs> GR Motorsports BMW number 118 has already spent 10 minutes in the pit lane. The crew are trying to work out a way to get the car back on track. During my stint, um, the first stint I had, we had problems gear shifting. Uh, so that, that stint was a little bit compromised with shifting from fourth to fifth and fifth to sixth. And then this stint we just did, um, we started to see a rise in temperature again. And the guys think the oil in the, uh, in the gear shift system may be a little bit dirty and that could be causing temperature to go up again. But of course at this stage we just want to protect all the mechanicals on the car and make sure the car finishes the race. So uh, yeah, better to, better to pit stop now and let the guys give it the once over and hopefully take it home. One of the early leaders and a favourite for the race, the Red Camel 303 is slow on track. The Cupra is stuck in fourth gear. 
Not the way Evo wanted the race to end. Yeah, we were hoping for more code 60s or other problems, uh, so we decided to stay out. Our lap times were more or less the same as the slowest BMWs, looking at the traffic and uh, just cruising. At the chequered flag, it's the 129 of LMS Racing who have been consistent and fast enough, and indeed, they've increased their lead to a full seven laps by the end. John Shen got into the car when it was running in third. Plenty of pressure then, driving a car that was holding a podium position. Well, it was uh, pretty scary for me because I don't want to screw it up and my, and my team will be mad at me. So I was under a lot of pressure, just kind of bring the car back home safely and finish the race and don't try to do my best lap time or something like that. So it's, uh, hey, I'm, I'm glad I, I, I did it. Others oh, more relaxed about driving in a podium position. I think we were leading like three laps or four laps, so pretty easy. I just uh, wanted to bring the car home. What I will remember is that it was super hot. So, uh, yeah, that's what's going to come home with from here. <laughs> the organizers very pleased too. I think it was a fantastic race till, till the last moment. It was very close. We really had battles. Um, the TCR was really, really, really exciting. Uh, I think really we have a great, 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 great race. Top three cars are all Coopers. LMS Racing, a deserving winner with the 129 car. NKPP 175 second overall, third Modena Motorsport number 216. The TCR podium identical to the overall, so the drivers were handed both trophies at the same time before they got to the champagne. So that's LMS first, NKPP second, Modena third. In Cup 1, the trophies are presented to Hoffa Racing, powered by Bonk Motorsport, whose number 131 BMW took the class win. Second, their sister car, number 127. Third in Cup 1 class, the number 151 of Zorg Rensport. The top step of the SP3 class podium, occupied by the drivers of the number 786 from ScanGrip Racing. On the second step, the 118 of GR Motorsport and the Munchkoff Racing number 259, third position. Round two of the 24-hour Touring Car Endurance Series powered by Hankook is complete and has been a great success here at Imola. We reconvene next time in Portugal at Portimao, not just for the third round of the European Series, but it's the second round in the Championship of the Continents. It's bound to be an exciting 24-hour race at the Autodromo Internacional de Algarve. Be there as a spectator, or better still, as a competitor. For more info, 24HTCEseries.com.